So last month, we were on a flight with fellow Aussie oh, man, YouTuber, so Friendly Geordies. Just a completely normal domestic flight. Just just the regular old takeoff and you, you're the landing. Good. You know, this nothing to well. I mean, un until we were, you know, pulled off the plane by federal police. If you are on board, just make your way forward to the uh, front of the cabin. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Hello. 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 I just wanted to have a chat to you in relation to uh, any some of you guys run the point gap. A remote Pine Gap spy station, a collection of domes in the desert, and a place very few Australians know much about at all. The most powerful American intelligence facility outside of the United States. No, no, close the gate, close it. No, no, stop. This is by far the scariest video oh, we've ever made. Scary. We, we teamed up with friends. Geordies to sneak into Pine Gap, which is one of the CIA's most important spy bases. But before we get into that, the most obvious question is, is like what is diving. this giant American base doing on the other side of the world in the middle of Australia? Well, first off, it shouldn't be controversial to say the CIA wants to control the world, right? Like, surely there's no one out there who thinks they're not doing that. They've got the most advanced satellites in the world and they're sucking I'll up everyone's information, which, you know, it's good on you. But they've got a big problem, right? And I'll explain it to you over there. All right, so let's pretend this globe here is uh, planet Earth and then this can of toxic industrial lubricant is a satellite. So these satellites are flying all around Earth, just booming their signals down. But the issue with the Americans, right, is that they've got spy bases here. They can only access satellites up here. They've got no access to the ones down here. But if they were to build a satellite base in a foreign country like Australia, suddenly they've got access to all the satellite signals coming down here. Pretty clever, right? <laughs> so if they wanted to, you know, send a missile into a wedding in, let's say, in Iraq, or if they wanted to, you know, eavesdrop on conversation, if they want, if they wanted to eavesdrop on conversations yeah. down in, Is that in, that works? in Madagascar, they just do it through Pine Gap. <laughs> now, thanks to some average looking whistleblowers like Edward Snowden and much hotter ones like Christopher Boyce, we have access to all these leaked documents exposing the inner workings of Pine Gap. Now, now get this, the base is codenamed Rainfall and it's part of a top secret international spy infrastructure called Five Eyes. These CIA guys are literally out here laughing as Bond films. It's so embarrassing to read. But thanks to these documents, we know all about Pine Gap. We know about their capabilities and how important they are to the US. But you don't really need to read these. Like, I mean, unless you're a YouTuber and you want to look smart, like th these leaks are redundant. See, the American government is so proud of its surveillance of the whole world that their CIA agents just brag about it at every opportunity anyway. The Pine Gap satellites are the most sophisticated pieces of military hardware ever created by the United States government. They are very, very effective at intercepting signals. And the person on the other side, of course, can hear that, that person as clearly as you can hear me speaking in front of you today. So who's using that communication signal? Is it Saddam Hussein talking to his generals or is it mum and dad talking to their kids? Now, you may think it's weird that a CIA agent is admitting to a room full of people that he actively spies on their conversations with their kids. But rest assured, the kind of people who attend CIA lectures are the kind of people whose grandkids stopped speaking to them years ago. And we'll probably forget everything in this lecture in an hour once their bingo game starts. Has anybody here been involved in weapons testing? I can suck a few, a, few, a few hands up. Now, just to be clear for all the nerds out there, this guy right here is technically an NSA agent, not a CIA agent. But for the rest of this video, when I say CIA, I mean CIA, DIA, NSA, NRO, and every other US intelligence institution. I, I feel like I'm in the laundry aisle whenever I talk about the US government's monstrous global surveillance apparatus. You know, for, for the rest of this video, Ultra Oxy, Free and Gentle, Original, Downey, it, it's all the CIA. We're talking about US spy bases here. But Pine Gap wasn't always this hub for global surveillance. For, for 75,000 years, this place was the home of indigenous Australians who are planet Earth's oldest human civilization. And then white people showed up. They kind of came out of nowhere 200 years ago and genocided the original Australians, which conveniently made the outback a lot more spacious and offered some much needed privacy for civilized games of croquet or maybe a massive secret CIA base. So with the traditional owners of the land out of the way, everything was going well for the CIA in Australia until the 60s when all these people inexplicably started dyeing their clothes and doing acid and making weird noises. But the one thing these hippies did, which wasn't you know, super annoying, was they decided they don't really like the idea of a shadowy organization that wants to spy on you and control the world. And in Australia, this meant there were constant protests and waves of people trying to break into this giant American spy base in the middle of the outback. 
<laughs> but let's be real. No, no one cares what thousands of hippies have to say. Like the, the real issue for the CIA came in the 70s when we elected a new leader, a guy called Goff Whitlam. Now he was super unique, firstly because his name's Goff. Like, what the fuck is that? Oh, I've never met a guy called Goff. You, you've definitely never met a guy called Goff. Wikipedia doesn't show any other mentions of another person with the first name Goff. It's just a crazy, made-up name that'll never, ever exist ever again. But the other thing that made him unique is that he wanted an independent Australia that wasn't going to be bullied by foreign superpowers. He pulled Australian troops out of Vietnam, and the Americans were like, what the fuck are you doing, Goff? I thought we had something special. Remember that time we got all those children and burned them alive? Well, you're turning it back on all these fun times we had. And like a classic toxic boyfriend, the CIA started bugging Australian Parliament and surveilling Goff's party. And when Goff found out, he responded by threatening to close Pine Gap. And this was a step too far for the Americans. The CIA saw Goff as a serious threat, so they simply orchestrated a coup to get rid of the democratically elected leader of Australia. So how did the Americans get rid of our Prime Minister? Well, it turns out there's this completely symbolic position in Australia government called the Governor General. It's a bullshit remnant of the English monarchy, an unelected person whose only job is to dress like a fucking idiot and rubber stamp everything that the parliament votes on. So a guy called John Kerr was the Governor General at the time, and coincidentally, he was also secretly working for the Americans. The CIA called him Our Man Kerr. They were paying for all his travel and generally sharing him with money so he could, I don't know, buy as many stupid hats as he wanted. And even more coincidentally, it turned out there was this dusty old law that said the Governor General has the power to dismiss the Prime Minister. And that's exactly what he did. I mean, this has never ever happened before. The CIA essentially terminated the democratically elected leader of Australia. The Prime Minister, Mr. Whitlam, has been sacked. The opposition leader, Mr. Fraser, is the new Prime Minister of Australia. He was replaced with a more subservient Prime Minister who immediately renewed Pine Gap's contract, and no leader ever since has dared to question all the secret CIA bases spread across our country. Now, we all know about the Americans and their little hobby of getting rid of democratically elected leaders in enemy countries in the third world, but it turns out they do this to their friends too. We accepted that our island was just a giant US military base and no form of democracy would ever get in the way of that. And by the way, calling Australia a giant US military base isn't an exaggeration. These top secret American bases are literally everywhere. Like this fucking thing, what, what, what the fuck is this? It's even more secretive than Pine Gap. They're the tallest man-made structures in the Southern Hemisphere, but we have no idea what they're doing. All we know is that every now and then when a passenger plane flies near it, it mysteriously malfunctions and suddenly plunges to the ground, prompting the International Pilots Association to say, well, we don't know what the American military is doing there and we don't wanna know, but we'd like our planes not to fly there anymore. Now look, all of you know that we're obviously very patriotic, true blue Australians. And unlike this like weak and cowardly and pathetic International Pilots Association who choose to just ignore the problem, we think we deserve to know what's going on in our own country, right? So, you know, obviously we don't have any experience sneaking into a CIA base, let alone the most important one. So we decided to speak to a lovely lady called Donna a member of a group called Christians Against All Terrorism, who somehow managed to sneak into the base back in 2006. So how did you actually get into... <laughs> well, we weren't great. Like, we're not sleuths. We, we've, I've never broken into anything before. We kind of didn't know what to do. So one of our crew went to Bunnings and bought bowl cutters. It was all on camera and everything, and later came out in court. The Bunnings guy testified that Brian went and bought these bolt cutters. Waterboarding some poor Bunnings employee to get this information out of him. This is... <laughs> now, Donna explained to us that one of the ways we justify having a brutal top secret CIA base in the middle of Australia is by technically calling it a US Australian joint defence facility. So, while it's run entirely by the CIA, apparently Australians are meant to have some kind of like symbolic role in it as well. Are there any Australian staff working at Pine Gap? There yeah, there are. Um, cleaners, <laughs> catering. <laughs> I don't think they're in charge. <laughs> now, Donna obviously couldn't just drive through the front gate, so they set out on a six-hour trek in the middle of the night over desert mountains to get in this way. But the weirdest part is that they told the defence minister the exact night they were planning to sneak in. They said that they were Aussie citizens who were concerned about war crimes and they wanted to do a citizen's inspection of this foreign facility on Australian soil. But for some reason, no one took them seriously. We fell over, we up. hit fences, we bumped into trails like walking in the dark. <laughs> there were cows who started mooing at us we're like, shh, shh, shh. You know? <laughs> When I thought, oh, this is just ridiculous, like this is pretty crazy. And then I saw lights and it really strikes you. Then I walked closer and I could see the base and I could see little people walking around. And I thought, far, 
<laughs> I won't swear. Yeah. <laughs> Far out. That, I'm not crazy. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That is crazy. I am right to be here. It's fucking three o'clock in the morning. There's people walking around this American spy base in the middle of the desert. What are they doing at three or four in the morning? And then we heard this, drop the bolt cutters. On both sides, there was AFP with guns. Get on the ground, get on the ground. I was like, you know what? I have been walking for six hours. <laughs> I said, if I get on the ground, I am not getting up again. I said, I am so sore. Uh, she came behind me and, and kind of got the back of my head and, and pushed me to my knees. And I said, okay, all right, I, I can be on my knees. And then she got her boot and put it in into my back. And I was like, <laughs> like on the ground like this. And I said, you don't have to, you know, put your boot in. You don't have to yell at me. I said, you're the ones with the guns. <laughs> now, she may have had secret police standing on her neck, which, you know, doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but I'm actually incredibly jealous that she's one of the only Australians to have ever seen the Pine Gap balls with their own eyes. This is one of my photos. Oh, you got the balls. My dream is to see the balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really want to see them. So why would a random Christian woman risk potential life imprisonment just to protest this base? Well, it turns out the story of Pine Gap is much more personal for Donna. She's been there on the ground when Pine Gap's missiles hit their targets. Now, some say the US directly killed about a million people in the war on terror. Others say the figure's closer to five million. We, we don't know the exact figure, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Right? Like the, the joke is no one actually cares when an Arab on the other side of the world dies. But Donna and her friends discovered a little war crime hack to make people pay attention. You see, if white people travel to the Middle East and go to these civilian areas in Iraq and just hang out there, it makes it much, much harder for Western governments to bomb that exact location. This was called the Human Shield Program and it was super effective, you know, apart from the one day that Donna didn't arrive on time. I went to a place called Ashwala Marketplace. There'd been a missile strike. And this had just been a civilian area. There were a few little um, market stores that had opened up for people to rush in and get some food and supplies um, during the war. And this place was blown to pieces. And I saw a sight that was something I've never seen before, just the chaos. There were pieces of human flesh around on the ground and puddles of blood. And it, it was it was chilling, it was haunting. And I was saying, why why here? Why our marketplace? Why my child? Mm. What could I say? Yeah, you don't have an answer. No answer. The coordinates for that missile came from Pine Gap. Yeah well. Mm. Now, obviously, Donna was very motivated to get people talking about Pine Gap, and lucky for her, the police brought as much attention to it as possible. They dug up this 50-year-old law from the Cold War called the Defence Special Undertakings Act that had never been used before to claim that Donna was a national security threat and throw her in jail. Long story short, they were thrown in prison until the government realised how bad it looked to throw these cute Christians in jail on behalf of the Americans, when all they essentially did was trek through the outback in their own country. So they eventually reversed the decision and let them go. But the government learned their lesson and responded by tightening Pine Gap security and rolling out new draconian security laws that gives them the power to detain anyone without charge. So it's, it's going to be it's going to be different now. So it's going to be harder for us. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Good luck. Now, because of this, no civilians have been brave enough to go in there after Donna. But. We're not regular civilians, right? We're YouTubers. And YouTubers are on the front lines of content, right? We're there, boots on the ground, ready to film whenever a uh -oh. Japanese man commits suicide. Bro, did we just find a dead person in the suicide forest? We don't even flinch when the world calls upon us to film ourselves making out with our own sisters. If anyone's brave enough to sneak into the world's most significant CIA base, it's us. Now, these stories of Pine Gap guiding missiles into Iraqi weddings may sound like old news, but don't worry, Pine Gap's still as busy as ever. Right now, while Israel is on a rampant campaign to flatten Gaza so they can have more room to film their thirst traps, Pine Gap is in charge of providing targeting and analysis for their missiles, making sure that they hit the right hospitals and refugee camps and churches. Because of Pine Gap, Australia is directly responsible for the death of 28,000 Palestinian civilians so far. And we're not even at war with Palestine. I mean, like, while that's, like, super illegal, it does kind of make sense, right? I mean, Pine Gap is, you know, a big military base built on stolen Indigenous land. It's only right for them to continue the proud tradition of wiping out Indigenous populations across the world. Now, in order to get to Pine Gap, 
we've got to fly to the middle of Australia to a town called Alice Springs. It's a popular tourist destination where you get to take your family. It's so whimsical. You've got Indigenous people serving you champagne while you stroll through the desert. With all these fun activities, you wouldn't even know that the CIA tracks every single person who enters the town. Security services uh, of, the, of the US, Australia and our allies would uh, typically be alert to anyone who might be uh, coming into the town. So we figured now that we're on a plane flying to Alice Springs, the only way to not blow out cover in a town full of American spies is to blend in. We're not Aussie YouTubers, you know, we're not collaborating with friendly Geordies to sneak into one of the world's most important CIA bases, no. We're just one of the hundreds of regular, everyday American spies in Alice Springs. Now, we definitely weren't expecting this in the middle of the outback, but there were American accents everywhere. I think I might have spotted a few spies. And Geordie didn't waste any time. He went straight in to investigate. Now, they may have pulled some fancy CIA mind tricks and managed to convince Geordie they weren't spies, but the rest of us weren't so easy to fool. So conspiratorial. They're Americans who live in Alice Springs. I have a way with him. He has an American accent. He's a spy. He's different. Where did they say they work? These are the mines, dude. What's that? Look, we just have to agree to disagree about these men we encountered at the airport. But whatever, Geordie's probably got bigger problems to focus on, like the fact that his house got firebombed and he's receiving death threats from the mob because of his political YouTube videos. Either way, we obviously weren't going to make any big discoveries by speculating on random Americans we find in the airport lobby. So we decided to get into the car and drive through Arunda country to get to Alice Springs. In all honesty, we're a bit lost out here. So we thought the best first stop would be the Tourism Where? Information Centre. Are, are there any tours of Pine Gap? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are, are there any viewing spots? No. I know Mount Gillen, you could see it. No, yeah. you can't. No, it's a very small. You, when when you, you fly, fly, there are military drives out there with machine guns. Yeah. So if you attempt to go in to find out, you'll be quite polite. We don't want to go in. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be politely asked to go in. There's nothing to see there. They only apparently have gardens there, you know, so. It turns out getting into the base isn't as simple as we thought, and our spy disguises weren't working very well either. Why have you got the same ties on? Yeah. Wearing suits, you stand out like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're not, they're more than a Michael Jab. If we want to sneak in successfully, we'll need to study the American spies in their natural habitat. And if you watch as many spy movies as we do, you'd know that the best place to find spies is at the casino. Luckily, there's a massive one just outside of town. This place is so American. Now, this casino was not at all what we expected. There, there was country music everywhere. It felt like they had airlifted Texas and dropped it in the middle of Australia. Now, obviously, we did what we had to do to fit in. We, we, we had to gamble. You know, we, we didn't want to gamble, but we, we couldn't blow our cover either. And the, the fact that we do this in every single video we film with Friendly Geordies is just coincidental, and you, you shouldn't look into it. So we're in the middle of nowhere, right? Most of the patrons in this Outback Casino Ew. are Indigenous Australians. But then, no joke, Everyone else is literally an American who works at the big CIA base just out of town. It's insane. Now, we obviously came here as a joke, right? We didn't expect to actually yeah. like, see American spies, yeah. but Tech just has there no they were, just just, chilling, them for sure. just hanging out after work, playing some weird American game called shit or, or poos. Or, no, it was craps. It's called craps. What's it like living here? It seems a bit We've been here for like more than six hours. Yeah, they're really yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, I really wasn't expecting them to be this open about working at Pine Gap. What are you doing there? It felt like they were all trying to impress us and outdo each other with how fancy their security clearance was. First of all, you're listening to this guy. This guy doesn't get it. He doesn't know it. So he's just making I'm it up. Like but I have to say, for a foreign army operating a top secret CIA base in the middle of our country, they were kind of fun to hang out with. Look, we had a fun time. It's, it's a pity they'll probably hate us tomorrow night once they find out the guys they were gambling with the night before were going to sneak into their workplace the next morning. Yeah. 